pretty looking boat. Nice looking boat down here. Lots of accommodation. Big L-shaped galley right here. How many full beam aft cabins with a double island berth do you see in aft cockpits? What's up everyone? Today I've got a tour of a 2014 Hunter 40 for y'all. For whatever reason, these boats are controversial. I'll be honest, I think I like this boat a lot more than I had anticipated, so I hope you enjoy the tour. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe if you haven't already. That's the best way to help support these videos and it's totally free, so thank you in advance. And without further ado, let's get to the tour. Just stepped aboard and going forward, handrail right there, which is nice. And pretty wide side decks, handholds going forward on the coach roof. No real obstructions going forward, and I like that. Nice, clean coach roof, all lines leading aft. Good ventilation, flush hatches, nothing to trip over really. An inboard and an outboard shroud. Now, these hunters don't have a back stay, so you don't have you don't have to worry about that in the aft section of the boat. The coach roof continues pretty far forward, but even though it does that, it still gives a pretty clean fore deck here because there's not there's just not much to trip over, and then having those flush hatches helps as well. Normally, I prefer flusher decks, but this is pretty nice. Coming forward, furling headsail, dual bow roller with a rock anchor up there. Bow locker with a hidden horizontal windlass and a place for your snubber, which is which is really nice. Keeps everything out of the way, so you're not tripping over stuff again. So it definitely seems like they, in the design of this boat, they were concerned with, you know, not having too much stuff on deck to trip over, which, which I like, you know. It's a good concern to have. Pretty looking boat. Looking up the rig. Mainsail with the stack pack and lazy jacks. Continuing aft. I really like this canvas setup. You've got a nice big dodger that you don't have to duck under to get down below. And then tons of canvas over the cockpit and a main sheet that is sheeted to that arch right there. So it keeps the traveler and the main sheet above your head and out of the way of the cockpit, which is nice, gives you a lot more room for cruising, and it's also safer, so I like that. And coming to the aft section, you've got a nice, nice big cockpit back here. With twin helms, a folding cockpit table, chart plotter on the cockpit table, a transom that folds open and becomes a, a swim platform, I believe. That's pretty cool. So you can go on and off the boat with ease, and then your two helm stations and stern stern rail seats off of them as well for extra seating. The cockpit sole is angled right here, so if you're if you're at the helm and you're sailing and you're heeled, where your feet are will actually be level, and you'll be able to brace nicely. Just a nice little feature. Got some storage back here on both sides and then no lazarite on this side however there is going to be one it looks like it's probably going to be a big one on the port side and i was right so nice big lazarite and there's actually a generator hidden down there as well very nice and then you've got plenty of room for seating you do have to walk up and down into the the main salon into the cabin and let's go ahead and do that so i take that back you do have to duck a little bit under under the dodger but not by much and then the ladder the companionway stairs going down are more there's stairs not really a ladder so going down forward is pretty easy even though i hear all the time that you're not supposed to <laughs> Nice looking boat down here. 
lots of accommodation, big L-shaped galley right here. And this is kind of what hunters do best. Hunters are able to pack a lot of accommodation into a, you know, a pretty decent boat for a coastal cruiser. We're gonna go ahead and go forward first. Show you guys the forward cabin. Now it's currently being used as storage, so all of the the exterior cushions are stored down here. But you've got your you've got a pretty big V berth cabin, storage down below the bed, hanging locker, a little seat to help you get in the bed and out, and a forward head up here for that forward cabin. So this is a wet head. It does have a shower with a shower curtain. Pretty nice compression post for the mass. There's a hanging locker. And going aft. For the main seating area, you've got a nice big U-shaped settee here. Salon table's a little small, but I can see why they why they do that so you can get around it nice and easy. And again, everything's just in really good shape. There's a rod there for the rigging going down to the chain plate. Storage down below the settees. And then another settee over here. Again, storage down below. All of these cockpit sole panels pop out. And there's these little handles to help you do that. So good access all around. You know. Very nice. And then a little forward-facing nav station right here. Certainly not the most comfortable nav station in a boat, but it's here. It works. You can navigate with it. You can go on your computer here. Instrument panels are at the nav station. So good place to host all that. And then just aft of that nav station is a, another head. So this head's in two sections. You've got a sink section and then the head and shower section and it walks through to the aft cabin. So there's an aft cabin in an aft cockpit boat. So that's kind of unique. Full beam aft cabin in an aft cockpit boat. You don't see that that often. And just a really nice galley. You've got everything you need. Cold storage here and there, gimbaled stove, microwave, and lots of, lots of storage all around. Nice little sink. Solid surface countertop and handrails. Shelves right there. Lots of places to put stuff. Engine's gonna be underneath the companionway stairs right there. We're gonna look at that in a little bit, but let's go ahead and show you guys the full beam, the full beam aft cabin and an aft cockpit boat. So you know, obviously the the ceiling's a little low underneath where you sleep, but when you're sleeping, you don't you're not standing up, so you don't you don't you don't need that headspace. So you do have standing headroom in the entrance right here. So I'm standing up right now. Hanging locker. The starboard. You have to duck a little bit under this, but yeah, I mean, how many full beam aft cabins with a double island berth do you see in aft cockpits? Definitely a rarity, very unique. And then you've got your, your walk through head right here. And that's it, that's the boat. Let's take a look at the engine and we'll do the full walkthrough. And there's your engine access right there underneath the companionway stairs. And I do believe some side panels pop out as well. Yanmar Diesel. All right guys, it's time for the full continuous below decks walkthrough from bow to stern.
this boat surprised me and despite the controversy I think it offers a ton of value if you want a beautiful and relatively affordable coastal cruiser for a couple or a small family this is the boat for you broker contact information and current asking price is going to be in the description below thanks for watching that's going to be it for this one be sure to leave a like comment and subscribe if you haven't already to help support this content Five years ago, we posted our first yacht tour. Since then, I've been aboard hundreds of cruising boats, both on and off camera. I've also been sailing for about 15 years now, worked on three boats, lived and cruised on one, and have grown this YouTube channel to a full-time career over the course of the last seven years. Randy has also been an integral part of all of that, but as I'm sure you've noticed, she's stepped away from the channel for the most part to take the lead in raising the kids, which I have to say is a crucial role and no easy task. She's an absolute rock star. One of the biggest requests I frequently get is for help in your cruising yacht search, and I completely understand why. The yacht market is full of brokers that are supposed to be seen as, quote, experts. However, while some may be, oftentimes that's not the case. This is compounded by the fact that by definition, because they make commission on the sale, a broker is biased towards selling you a boat, but not towards selling you the right boat for you. You cannot rely on them to have your best interests at heart. This is actually why I've turned down countless brokers that have offered me jobs over the years. I don't make money on the sale of any boats that I tour, and I want to keep it that way to avoid bias to protect you, the audience. So hopefully as a solution to this problem, I've launched what I'm calling Not A Broker Consulting. This is a new Patreon page where you can sign up to get help from me specifically at varying levels during your cruising yacht search. You might have noticed that boats come in all shapes and sizes, and cruising plans, budgets, families, personal needs, etc., are all different. My goal will be to help to find a boat that fits your customized situation the best that I can. If you sign up, you'll also get early access to ad-free versions of our yacht tours, which is an opportunity to see what I'm posting before it goes live to the masses. Certain tiers will also get super early leads on yachts that I think are great deals, even before I've filmed or edited a video for them. I think this could really help those of you looking for a cruising yacht and just need some guidance. And as always, if you just wanna support what we do, there's a tier for for that as well. Anyway, a link to the new page is in the description and should have popped up on screen as well. So thank you in advance. Much love. See you in the next one.